Hello everyone, my name is Hisham. I'm the owner of Clemson Aeronautics where we make the riveting and dimpling systems. It's been a long time since I put out a video or even worked on my airplane. Uh, I've had a few issues that was going on in my life and um, um, almost took care of all of them. Uh, one of which I had a shoulder injury uh, in the gym that was pretty severe and uh, I, COVID had uh, closed the operation room in the hospital because uh, there was just an outbreak over here and uh, patients was uh, just uh, overwhelming to the hospital so uh, they had to resort to taking all the operation room staff to, to go help with the COVID patients. Uh, finally did uh, my operation about six weeks ago in physical therapy. Now I actually <laughs> can't move my arm again. It's, it was pretty painful but uh, I'm getting over it right now. Uh, so during my downtime I managed to get uh, my AMP license finished so I'm full-fledged now AMP thank God <laughs> so and uh, we're back to building the airplane as I recall from the last video that I made uh, I was talking about those pieces here um, the tip rip assembly and uh, how to dimple them and, and so forth and um, which way and well uh, off camera I managed to do all the deep burying and dimpling and I primed them and uh, also the 913 uh, part and as you can tell I'm, I'm kind of trying to keep myself from doing mistakes and mixing parts from the left and the right so I'm uh, you guys know that I have two tables and I put my uh, right elevator uh, on the right table and the left elevator on the left table so I don't mix the parts and um, I disassemble some do all the work that needs to be done prime them and put them back on the table and um, I intend to use this method till I'm done with the elevators and um, next uh, that I have done yesterday I took these parts out from both right and left elevator and let's see these parts uh, they are the um, E1008 A and B's I disassembled them from the uh, uh, both right and left elevators and I also um, in that same page 9-10 on the top of the page it, it talks about uh, the E1022 um, the part that looks similar to this which is there's one on the inboard side of the left elevator and dimpling it and it was just a um, watch out dimpling that is for a special pop rivet so don't just go dimpling them just check it out and review other tapes that I talked about um, dimpling that part so uh, but on the right elevator there's also one of those and I believe there is one of those and I also debarred that and um, I'm working I debarred the edges on the buffer let's talk a little bit about that 
because this is important. It, um, those two parts, of course, are assembled together and they make one rib. Deburying those on the buffer uh, is easy if you do it the right way. If you don't, you can wind up trashing it, bending it, and getting your hands cut. Because uh, for those of you who have not used the buffer wheels a lot, but I, I've used it in the past because I'm also a machinist. So buffering, buffing wheels is not something strange to me. And it's made out of fibers. And if you go into this uh, buffing wheel with the edge and it catches, it will fly off your hand. Literally fly. Your, your buffing wheel, um, the, the grinder that you have your buffing wheel on it could be a third of a horsepower or something like that. But it is ripping at about 5,000 RPM or so or 5,500 RPM, or even if it's 3,600 RPM, that's a phenomenal speed. Uh, your propeller on the airplane is doing like 2,500 RPM. This is like 1,000 RPM more. When it grabs it, especially when the edge is not buffed and smooth yet, you know what I mean? So there is sharp parts of it, and if it gets into that fiber just right, it will grab it and it will pull it down or throw it at you. And I've mentioned this before. Uh, there's a Canadian gentleman that was building an airplane and he had it filmed. He didn't go in details like we're doing right here. And I think there was a challenge that they were going to build the RV-14A in a year and fly it to Oshkosh and stuff. So they had a whole slew of people, group, a huge group of people working on that airplane all the time, trying to get ready to fly to Oshkosh in one year. And the gentleman that was <laughs> supposedly the experienced one, and, uh, and all those guys, and he went into the grinder with a piece very similar to this, and it caught and it hit him in the chest, bent it, out of shape completely. He had, they had to buy another one. But buying another one is not the issue. Cutting your fingers off is, is a big issue. Getting hurt is a big issue. So please, when you're working on these parts, especially on the grinder with the buffing wheel, please, please, be extra careful and always let the wheel go down to the part. But because if you fix the part this way and it's going like this and it catches, it throws it at you or throws it on the ground. And if your finger is right here, it can go down and cut your finger and stuff. Very dangerous. So it could be very easy if you use, you're very careful. Don't put too much pressure. Another thing, when you're using the buffer wheel on this thing here and you feel it heats up, you don't want that to happen. You want it to barely touch. Heating up your part annuls it. Takes the hardness out of it. You don't want it to happen to your part. Okay? So be extra careful when you're using the buffing wheel with those parts. So, and uh, what I did, I disassembled those. And on the um, right elevator, I had these two parts also. Uh, that I deburred on the buffing wheel and now I got my $10 Harbor Freight drill to deburr the holes that's my next step and what I'm going to do I'm gonna I'm sitting here on the right side and I'm gonna deburr all these holes then I'm gonna move on to the left side and take those same parts that I had took out and put to the side and I had already deburred I'm gonna deburr the holes on those two then I'm gonna set up 
to dimple uh, those. Then prime them. And we'll be done with those, and then we'll move on to the next. Uh... Folks, one quick note that is somewhat important because um, these two parts used to be one part, and we cut them, uh, and we're supposed to deburr them. And you will have sharp edges here. You need to round these edges. Nice big round. And reason have it because you're gonna join these together and you don't want a sharp edge to be digging into your material. It might not break it, it might not cause a crack or anything like that. But it will certainly scratch the clad surface that you have and it will be liable to corrode later on it's not a good thing of course so make sure you round everything here because there's two surfaces that's touching together and they're liable to be kind of rubbing just a little bit now on the left side the left aileron is a little different than the right aileron. Um, I only have one of those. I have two of those, one of them inboard and one of them outboard. And the inboard I had already dimpled for that specific pop rivet. And I deburred the edges and ready to deburr the holes. Another thing that's different on the left elevator that is not on the right elevator, that one of the ribs, you only use half of it. The other half you don't use because it goes like this, with that area where the uh, little uh, motor for the trim tap, and uh, trim tap control. So this kind of makes an assembly that goes into the elevator in that open spot in the skin that you've seen. So deburring in this, you already done this on the right side, so it's not a big deal. And I'm very careful now not to mix the left with the right. I had to bring it over on this side and I'm gonna have to take it back. So those are the two parts that is kind of unique to the left side deburring them on the deburring wheel might be a little bit challenging some parts of it so I'm just using the deburring wheel to do the outside parameters on these very carefully and um, be careful not to heat up the part and then I had to use uh, a file to go in from the inside. It's not worth the risk trying to put it on the, the bearing wheels. Just use a small file and just kind of smooth it. After that, I'm gonna deburr the holes. Then, before I do the dimpling, just to correct myself on this here, before I do any dimpling, I'm going to scotch bright everything. And this scotch bright does help with the edges inside and outside too. And even the holes that you deburred um, with your Harbor Freight drill. Sometimes it's not quite, still there is a sharp edge. Here's the uh, scotch bright does a good number on that. It helps quite a bit, it smooths everything. Then, after that, we dimple. While we're dimpling, we have to refer to the manual very carefully to make sure we're deburring everything, I mean, uh, dimpling everything uh, to the right side, the correct side. Just remember, the flush side is the outside of the airplane so you need to be imagining the part 
And uh, this is uh, inside the airplane, and it's sitting like this, and it's the bottom of the left elevator. So when if you're dimpling something in here, the fly side have to be here because this is what's facing the skin. Uh, this part here have also a few rivet nuts to, to deal with. So when the time comes, we're gonna be looking at this carefully, step by step. Well, this uh, quick video I made today, uh, just to let everybody know that I am back. I'll be a little bit slow because of a lot of things, uh, including my shoulder and uh, doctor appointments and physical therapy and all that stuff. So, so it will be a little bit slow going with the airplane building, but I just kind of wanted to let everybody know that we're getting back into building the airplane. Always check your manuals for everything you do. If, if you suspect that you're not going to the right direction or something is done before time or something like that, you need to check the manual and watch people's videos. There is there's a few people out there, they are not going as in details like I am. And uh, this is kind of the objective of this videos. Folks, I'm not making any money off of this, period. No money is involved. I'm advertising for, for my machine, that is true. And uh, believe me, with the machines and the yokes that we manufacture here and sell, we don't make money either. But my goal, if you are building an airplane and you have a stumbling point, you can get back to one of my videos and see what I've done about that. It might give you a hint on how to proceed with the part that you're working on. Because I am not missing anything. Just every single part I talk about, uh, when I see that uh, specifically uh, positioning parts together, how they are assembled together. I try to, to be very clear about that and show that on the video. So um, while you're building, you can get back to this video and see how I position something. Then put, look at the manuals and uh, make sure it is correct. Then you build your airplane. Well, folks, thank you very much. And um, I hope to see you soon in another uh, video. Please comment on the video. Please subscribe to the channel. It will Now that does help me spread the word. I still don't make any money. But if you do a like and, and subscribe and share this video with other people, it would help other folks building airplanes around the world because I, I've had I've, I've shipped my parts uh, to, to several countries so I hope that you enjoyed the video thank you very much for your time and we'll see you next time